Well, welcome back, guys. Uh, today I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, s maybe some tips or advice on um, making a switch from either uh, Windows or Mac. Windows, with all of the uh, talk lately about uh, security and privacy, um, may spur many more people uh, in the direction of Linux. Mac, on the other hand, um, just introduced their new operating system, and uh, I believe it's called El Capitan, and uh, replacing or uh, upgrading or updating Yosemite. <clears throat> I happen to have a an iMac. I did upgrade to El Capitan. I haven't played with it too much because, quite frankly, I'm I stay on Linux most of the time, but. Um, one of the things that bothers me about Apple is their um, protection of their operating system. I understand protection up to a certain degree, but for example, um, if I buy music from Apple on their iTunes uh, website, when I try to play back it restricts you to the number of computers that you can install the songs on. I understand the need for some protection, but uh, the problem with Apple is uh, they only allow you five. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have um, installed Mac OS X on this computer that you're looking at which I built originally as a Hackintosh and unbeknownst to me every time I <clears throat> reinstalled Mac OS X or OS 10 uh, it counted as one of the five so before I knew it I was up to five and without knowing it I went to install one more time and put the music on and Apple told me I could not do that which kind of irritated me because I had paid for the music but um, I don't want to uh, get off on a tangent on that but there are many reasons why someone might make the switch from Mac or Windows to Linux and I'm a huge Linux, Linux advocate for a variety of reasons but um, not the least of which is freedom of choice and the amount of variety available for the average user but that can create problems sometimes because the average user is coming over from Windows and quite frankly they don't know where to begin they do research, they find so many different flavors, so many different distributions. <clears throat> some are labeled as easy for beginners, some are uh, not uh, easy for beginners. They have, I, uh, they have a very difficult time understanding where they should start. So I thought I'd go through a little bit of a um, uh, rundown on some of the distributions that I believe are appropriate for someone just making the move from Windows. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, because of the number of distributions available, I, I, I had no trouble picking my top five. But um, any, I'm not going to rank them uh, one to five. Uh, I'm just going to put the five out there because it's really up to the individual to do a little homework go into the websites, take a look at the uh, screenshots, uh, look into the forums, see the kind of discussion. Just do a little bit of work up front before you make a decision. But really you can't go wrong with any of these. Now I'm also gonna talk a little bit about common computer applications and their equivalent within Linux. <clears throat> so if somebody was making the move from Windows 
I'm sure they would need to know about browsers. They would need to know about email applications, photo management, video playing and editing, and office applications. So I'm going to go over a couple of uh, a couple of options that, as a beginner, you might uh, consider uh, if you do make the move from Windows. Now, <clears throat> the first thing that I believe kind of trips up the average Windows user is the download, burning of the USB or CD, and then the installation process. Now, I'm not going to go into an instructions on that, but um, each of the distributions that I'm going to mention uh, has information readily available to help you get that done. Uh, the only thing you need to know is do you want to do a legacy install or do you want to do a UEFI install? <clears throat> if you have a motherboard that is UEFI capable, I would suggest doing a UEFI install. When you boot up the USB, or when you access it, usually it has two options. Uh, one uh, is the UEFI and the other is the legacy. So if you have a really old computer, <clears throat> you might want to select the legacy and then the the install will do the rest. All you have to do is pick one or the other. So once you install, um, most of the five distributions that I'm going to mention are pretty self-explanatory. Now, I would recommend as a desktop environment XFCE. Now, as you can see, I'm running Manjaro here and I have the XFCE desktop, which I believe is the easiest for uh, someone making the switch from Windows. The menus are very uh, intuitive, pretty much self-explanatory, and so you shouldn't have a problem understanding what the distribution is all about and finding your way around. And again, it's just a matter of taking some time to explore. So. Um, it all depends on how much time you want to devote. But to get a basic Linux system running should take no more than an hour. Uh, download, burn the USB, go through the installation. So let's talk about programs. If you're making the switch from Windows and you're going to need a browser, Firefox and Chrome are readily available. So you shouldn't have any issues becoming familiar with the browsing aspect. Many distributions come with either one or the other out of the box. For your email, I use Geary um, and I'll show you the interface. Geary is just like, um, well, it's like, uh, it's very close to the Windows look for email. Now, um, pretty self-explanatory. Once you load it up and you enter your information, it just asks you for your uh, email address and your password, and then it goes and pulls in all of your email. So you should have no problem with Geary. This is what it looks like. The other alternative would be uh, Thunderbird. Now Thunderbird is a Mozilla, Mozilla product. Mozilla um, ha uh, also makes Firefox. So if you're using Firefox as your browser, you might want to consider using Thunderbird as your email client. So either one of those, Geary or Thunderbird, would be useful for email. Now for photo management, <clears throat> um, you have a, a wide variety, but for the beginner, I would recommend G-Thumb, G-T-H-U-M-B, Shotwell, S-H-O-T-W-E-L-L, -L, and 
on the really simplistic side, NOMACS, N-O-M-A-C-S. If you want to get into serious photo editing, <clears throat> you'll want to, <clears throat> similar to Photoshop, you'll want to download GIMP. Now, many distributions come with GIMP already installed, so you'll have to take a look at that once you install your distribution. For video playback, the, the standard is pretty much VLC. VLC also has a, I believe they have a Windows and a <clears throat> Apple equivalent. So VLC should be pretty familiar. And then if you need to do some video editing, for, as a beginner, I would recommend OpenShot. It's very intuitive. Uh, it's similar to anything you might have used either in um, with a Mac or with Windows. <clears throat> it's a very familiar look. And so I think you'd be comfortable editing your videos with OpenShot. Now for Office, uh, many distributions come with LibreOffice, which LibreOffice pretty much covers all the bases. The files are compatible with Windows files, um, so you, you shouldn't have any issues there. But if you want to go in a different direction, if you want to get a little simpler, you can use Abbey Word for word processing and GNumeric or numeric for your spreadsheets. So that covers all of the necessities. Now obviously there are many many other categories of software and one thing about Linux is you'll never be at a loss uh, for software. There's a huge library of applications available. And so <clears throat> that covers pretty much the software so let's move into the distributions themselves. Now for a beginner my recommendation would be to stay with something that will install fairly easily and intuitively and be comfortable and familiar looking when you boot into your distribution for the first time. So let's take a look at what I consider to be the top five for uh, your first introduction to Linux. Now there are others that could be added to this list and, and <clears throat> these are my favorites but um, there are lots of others that are really super. So the first one I would recommend is Linux Lite. <clears throat> now Linux Lite is um, easy install. Currently it's legacy only so that should not be a, a hindrance. Um, because it can install on any any machine. Um, so Linux Lite would be one of my top five because ease of install, familiar look, XFCE desktop, great support community. So that would be the first item on the list. The next is Zorin, now either OS 9 or OS 10. <clears throat> they have a familiar look. You can, they, out of the box, they come with uh, at least three out of the box on the default. On the paid version, comes with six different looks that you can have. Um, and it mimics Mac OS X, GNOME, uh, Ubuntu with the Unity desktop, uh, and uh, Windows XP, Windows 7. So you can give it the look that you want. So if you're coming from Windows 7, then you can click on the Windows 7 option and it'll be very familiar looking to you. You should be at home with it. Uh, Zorin has a free version and a paid. Uh, I would try the free version. It downloads and installs easily. Uh, you'll boot into it and you'll be comfortable with it. All of the software that I mentioned is available. Number two. Number three is elementary. Elementary bills itself as a fast and open replacement for Windows and OS 10. It's got a familiar look to it. Uh, once you boot up, you will have <coughs> no problem finding your way around. 
All of the software that I mentioned is readily available within elementary. Some of it comes standard out of the box. The support community is good. Uh, shouldn't have any issues. Uh, it's stable. And many uh, new, new Linux users start off with elementary. The next on the list is Peppermint OS 6. It uses a little bit different desktop, but nothing that you can't get familiar with uh, in a short amount of time. Peppermint is rock solid, stable, runs just about anything you throw at it. Um, if you start off with any of these that I've mentioned, uh, I would recommend staying with whatever you choose stay with it for a little while because uh, you need to develop some type of familiarity with it so you're comfortable with it on a daily basis and peppermint has a great support community the install is uh, normally flawless uh, they have a great software selection and they have uh, a variety along with Linux Lite they have a variety of options that they've added uh, to the normal Linux install and uh, operating system. So uh, you'll have uh, new, new things to, to uh, discover uh, whenever you try any one of these. <clears throat> and last but certainly not least um, is Manjaro Linux. Now Manjaro just came out with their new Cinnamon edition. 1509-1. Cinnamon is a very intuitive desktop um, and so it's it's a little bit more um, processor intensive than XFCE. For the new user I would recommend Manjaro's bread and butter. Uh, they are basically their default desktop which would be the XFCE so if you click on download you'll see XFCE right at the top and they have a 64-bit and a 32-bit so either of those you click on it you download you burn to a CD or USB I would recommend USB and then um, go through the installation process uh, on all of these, the installation process is very intuitive and you shouldn't have any problems at all. <clears throat> so to summarize, uh, there's really no reason not to make the switch from Windows. Uh, Linux has a lot to offer. The support community is outstanding. Any of these five would be great for you if you're just starting off as a beginner. Um, there are others that I could have put on the list but five is enough to cover and I believe these five cover all the bases. So that's it for today's video guys. Um, <clears throat> just my comments on uh, trying to help people who might be on the verge of making the switch. And so, uh, if uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thumb the videos up. And I will see you next time, guys. Take care.